to the FTN Show. Hey everybody, welcome to Forge Narrative. My name is Paul, your host. I'm joined tonight by Chris Morgan. Got my psychic gut on. And Josh Gen. Hey, good evening, everybody. What's happening? A uh, Mephiston's happening. Anything else that's going on in the game verse comes secondary to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to talk about my hobby progress later on and how that I'm just a, uh, I'm basically a, a Blue Angel fanboy and everything else is secondary. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was very excited to see the, the preview video and I probably got, like, Upwards of 12 private messages from people saying, hey, did you see this yet? And uh, you know you have a really, really big problem or a really supportive group of friends when everyone's just excited for you in that respect. It was very fun. Yeah, you know, but we've been talking a lot about the list that I'm, I'm building for various tournaments coming up. But we got to look beyond that. Like, what's happening? What's going to be happening at the LBO? What's the, uh, what's the meta going to be like and that kind of stuff? And and so everything that we have coming out is going to be interesting to, to, uh, to talk about. And then how it all relates to what the, what the the next big tournament after the first of the year is going to be like. Yeah, it's it's interesting because from everything we can tell, Psychic Awakening is just continuing to roll out, you know. And I can imagine that every time a new Psychic Awakening something or other comes, everyone's going to be shifting around and trying to figure out what the meta is. And if there's even more than one between now and the LVO, I mean, there's not a whole lot of big events left out there for people to to see how it's going to have an over overall effect on the state of the game there's going to be a lot of people who are just figuring things out and then the big tournament's going to happen well i was talking to a buddy of mine today he's like look your army list seem to like be in fantasy land is what he tells me it's not, i mean i'm paraphrasing he's like you like to be you like to have an army that can shoot really well and assault really well and it's like yes that's exactly what i like <laughs> He's like, well, that yeah, list that do everything is generally uh, better than lists that don't. Well, well, but but it's like not really super possible. Yeah, the game's just not that way anymore, right? Yeah, and I started thinking like, you know what, it is a bit of a holdover. Like I was telling him, like, look, um, like I'm playing Iron Hands right now, like everyone else, but I'm not like really committed to Iron Hands because I don't have any affiliation with for, for them. But I really like Black Templars. And I really like Blood Angels. I mean, Blood Angels being my my primary, of course. Like right? if I had to choose, like if I, if I had to like wave a magic wand and like what I, what what would be viable in tomorrow's tournament I'm going to pick Blood Angel. Well, they got legs. I mean they're they're winning components of other lists at this time. But how I how I like to win is I like to com- to play in most phases of the game. I, I the the armies that just exist places or have one cool piece are not as compelling to me as lists that get to have they get to move all their parts. And that's and and I think I'm so hot on Marines right now because I like playing with Marines. I mean, like most people, I'm not, I'm not saying anything new right now. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's kind of the, the funny thing about people getting upset about the new Marine meta, right? Is that Marines were already one of the most popular, if not the number one most popular faction in 40k. They're cool to the play fact with, that man. They are. Well, I mean, it's it's got a, a cool, cohesive image about it, what Space Marines are and what they do when they're the iconic 40k faction, right? So, and also, by the way, the easiest to collect because every set has Marines in it pretty much, right? Yeah, a a wide variety of plastic miniatures. Easily attainable and starter set fodder. So it it shouldn't surprise anybody, least of which you know the uh, Eldar players who have had a cushy for the last few years. Well, they have cushy well, rules for sure. So so what's the question though? Is it is it that you want to be able to impose your will on every phase of the game? And of course, the army that can do that is and do it the best is probably the bet to be, I guess, meta chased against. Or is it saying like? Do you just pick a skew and skew and run a skew list? Is that what we're? And then are we calling each flavor of Marines a, a different variety of skew? They, so they it's really are. not a honestly right. because uh, like for instance, salamanders are going to be super popular. Like the we've talked about, the rules are going to be very compelling. They're going to be they're they're going to be spoils for things like gene stealer cults. They're going to be spoilers for the lists that are hard to play against currently. I think chaos are. knights and even some of the like the Lord D builds out there just don't want any part of chaos, right? Or excuse me, any part of salamanders and, and the shenanigans they can pull you know but uh, yeah yeah keep going. but imperial fist for instance wreck salamanders because they get to do a lot of their their damage and their work from a fair amount of range 
that's the assumption in, in a world of bowling ball table terrain. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're talking like just on paper stuff. Like there's, there's all there, there will be cool shenanigans that you can you can pull because of the terrains of certain factions because you become masters of of moving and the and the physics of the game and that's that's actually one of the like underlying like core principles of the show is being like super good at the physics of the game. Uh, so I, I don't want to downplay that, but like the way terrain is placed, the terrain, how terrain is played in your area the um, equality in which t- terrain is on the tables is going to be right. a big factor uh, but and if missions looking, yeah yeah for sure but if we're looking at uh, just on paper salamanders incredibly strong if you're looking to beat the meta I think you want to be still in the iron hands imperial fist type stuff but then you run up against the Raven Guard player who just wrecks you because he pops all your characters that's right? the, yeah Ra- Raven Guard and uh, White Scars have some imp- very yeah. impressive tricks they can pull off. Uh, that's that's the funny thing about White Scars, too, is that initially people got a little bit excited about White Scars, and then it felt like they were just completely overshadowed by how Iron Hands were doing, or how Iron Hands were perceived as going to be doing, right? And all of a sudden, you know, after a few weeks of tournaments and analysis have come out, Turns out White Scars are making it pretty high up there on the on the rosters for you know top players and top factions taking home their fair share of GTEs and and tournaments all around and you think okay well there's something there then it's something that's less obvious than what people assume with Iron Hands Let, which let's think of course it. also if, did well if you put all your eggs in one basket then armies that can outmaneuver that one basket or get up there and touch. And ma- and manipulate that one basket are going to do really well, and the Raven Guard and White Scars can do that. And I know we're talking about like the Marine on Marine. What what this co- what this uh, conversation has kind of di- diverted to is the Marine on Marine meta. Sure. And I don't necessarily want to take us and root us in that. I want to talk about the fact that the Marine on Marine meta is real, and then how do you beat that? How do you how do you either play the anti meta Marine list, or how do you inject your Xenos filth in there and compete with that? Okay, well let me throw let me throw a question. Let me let me answer your your question with a question. I hate that. So you're we're not it's it's more complex than just Marine on Marine, right? So is it the Marine stratagem specific to the to the chapter that you're losing to, or that you're trying to get around or defeat? It, or is it key, is that it secondary units? doctrine? It is it is that uh, that bonus doctrine that you get. Well, I would argue it's units, right? Like I, I, I see where you're going, but I, I I got you to say what I wanted you to say. So yeah, I think sure, it's sure. you know, are you able to build a list that beats certain units? And it's quite quite honestly, right now, it looks like centurions and aggressors and, and potentially some sort of you know. <laughs> Just I say it's, I say it's not even just the flamers that. and all the shenanigans. Like, we're we're going to go to the Forge members. World stuff. We're going to go like Sakarans, Sakaran tanks that were good before are even better now. Yeah, I'm onto that. When like, you that was my jam. Rules. Yeah, like, I've been yeah, but but I don't think that's what's winning like the SoCal you know open and all it that is, right. What's winning is being able to outmaneuver people. Like really, right. what it is 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 not is you're not hearing about people that are shooting folks off the table. What you're hearing about are things that are winning like that guy. I had 50 drones and he just got to sit there on the table right and and, and endure or you you're about the thing that the guy the guy that added plus 10 to his movement or whatever and he touched my he bad touched my my death star unit like th- this is what you have to plan for that if, if you can find a, a counter to that and and that's where like i think Salamander's, so arguably it's once again it's the units right it's it's it not is. yeah yeah uh, so I, I think that, that arguing over what to do against different chapters is almost a moot point, right? Like, mm. if, if you're trying to beat every, if you're trying to be the best Marine player, you're building a list that beats key units. You gotta, you want a list that can take out, just like, <laughs> I mean, maybe it just doesn't exist anymore. Maybe GW has done it perfectly, a, a, I don't say perfect, but a really good job of balancing the, the meta. You can't have a list that beats a Knights. You can't have a list that, that defends in close combat, that defends in the psychic phase, that kills six aggressors, you know, beyond, you know, however you want to shake it up, you know, with other support or... It, I, I'm being a little obtuse with it because it's, well, it's hard unless, to unless layer it all out. But. See, salamanders do all this stuff you're, you're describing. Uh, I, I, I agree. They, they kind of do. So maybe that's... 
Are, did we just skip ahead an hour and finish the podcast? Well, well see, <laughs> what, I, what I'm saying is that salamanders are, I think, what the what will become the linchpin in the meta. So you now, have to figure out how what your salamander's plan is. But I would say that arguably ultramarines could take out salamanders, right? Nobody cares about ultramarines. But I think that's the sleeper, right? Because they've still got all the access to the snipers. They've still got all the good stratagems. They've got Bobby G if they need them. They've got the units I was kind of a big fan of, the Honor Guard that can heroically intervene and all that shenanigan stuff that no one seems to be, no one just seems to be like really putting any weight into it. But I well, mean, I think that, I think the Ultramarines can get around a lot of the Salamander stuff. You have, you have to think about like what it actually mattered, what plays in the game itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's where, that's where I'm going is like Salamanders, for instance, have a lot of things that play in the business areas of the game. So they have, they have things that like when, when you, launch an assault against a salamander's unit in the, or a salamander's army and that army destroys 300, 400 points of your army on, in your turn. Right. That's a problem for your strategy. You're better off not assaulting them. Straight up. Yeah, and, 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 and the thing I'm talking about, centurions or whatever, they have like all these, all the bolter shots. Like the marines don't sacrifice. And that's where I was going is like the, the, the guy, the buddy I was talking to was like, dang, dang, you, re- you really like to like, overly compete in a couple of the phases of the game and I'm like yes I do because I think that's the winning strategy is like if you can't if you if you ever find your list like if you're ever making a list and you find yourself sacrificing one of the phases of the game you have to make up for it in some other phase the, the whole Tau philosophy absolutely Tau is just basically inserting the same phase into everyone else's phases <laughs> yeah that's Marines, right, yeah. Are doing, Marines are doing that now too because now you've got like Imperial Fist shooting bolters like pistols you know, in the, in the shooting phase. So you're eating the Overwatch, then you're in close combat, et cetera, et cetera, getting just wrecked by heavy bolters. So I, I think, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no I, agree, I agree with exactly what you're saying, but where I'm, where I'm kind of like trying to frame the conversation is like, I think the best list on, on paper is a salamander's list. So if you want to play in that environment to where the salamanders always win, how do you win? So are we trying to say like how do we build our ideal salamanders list is where we're now going? No, no, I think everyone else will do that for you. Uh, what I'm saying is like, well, I'm, I'm saying you're you're saying how do you beat these upcoming tournaments? Like how do you drive the meta yourself? If you're looking at results, you're saying you know assuming I think assuming that that some percentage of the some large percentage will be marines. Assuming yes. that some some large percentage of that will be the best marine list that I believe to be salamanders. How do you win against that? I mean, my my answer is always just ignoring I, Overwatch, you know, because yeah. I mean, my answer is going to fist on at it and see what happens. <laughs> that's my answer. Uh, that's that's a pretty reasonable, uh, pretty reasonable assumption to make. I'm <laughs> I'm hundred percent down with that. No, but and and it was Salamanders are one of those things that got me thinking about the uh, suppressors again. It was only for about five seconds because I'm, I really don't like suppressors. But um, just the idea that you can shut down the Overwatch and being able to shut down Overwatch and some of those long-range flamers can make such a huge difference. And if you can get in combat with them, yeah, it's still dangerous, but it's not as dangerous. And the other thing is movement. And, and kind of going back to what I was saying about the missions earlier is that there are some missions that require a lot more ground control than other missions. You know, if we're talking LVO, we're talking about SoCal Open, we're talking about... Missions that, generally speaking, have a lot of different objectives. They require you to be in a lot of different places at the same time. I think that's one of the main reasons that White Scars are doing so well is because they can get around. You know, they can get around the table easily. So having some mobility is is also going to be key. So they, they if, can if cheat I'm, them. They can cheat movement. I'm not trying to jump, right. but they, they can get all this bonus movement, which is like the the most powerful thing in the game. Period. So, yeah, it's how right. they're getting their centurions in, on your doorstep without actually like losing anything. Well, it's it's how we're you know how fundamentally we need to to look back at the game here is the the armies that still seem to be doing well aren't just armies that kill stuff they're stuff that move they're armies that can move around and get from A to B and can deliver some hurt along the way you know that kind of ties into some of my recent thinking with with list design and uh, trying to maximize my own mobility with my faction. Yeah, I, I feel like being able to get around is going to be a really big deal. Well, I mean, that, that, that arguably puts Paul back on iron hands, right, with the flyers. Because you can you can play the run away from the flamer short range you know weapons game while you're plinking them down with 
with all the, the heavy shooting. No, leg- legitimately. Yeah, but those fires can't score, though. The, the that's, li- that's another problem. The list that I'm bringing, I feel, is the best list currently. Come the- a month from now, I don't think it's the best. I, th- I think Salamanders will be the best, and then it's like, how do you beat the best? That's that's that, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so so not to go into Magic the Gathering too hard here, but there's like, so if you're going to a, gr- a grand a GP or a tournament or something like that, right, like, you should always take the best deck. Right? You don't take the deck that beats the best deck. You always take the best deck because it's the best deck. See, so there, there are certain, there, there, I think it's a narrow situation to where you do that. Like, without question, I think you do it. I think that there's, there's a, there's a certain, like, skill level in which you do that. Right. But you're automatically putting yourself behind the curve if you take anything less than the optimum choice to, to a situation like that. So, if you truly believe salamanders are optimal, then there's no point in fighting it and trying to say, how do I beat salamanders? You just play salamanders. And I got it. People will have modeling decisions and hobby decisions. And there's, you know, that's, that's the fun is like answering the Rubik's cube. Like, okay, how do I prove that statement wrong? But I think if you want to win tournaments and, you, and you're, and you're in the Marine game, like you're, you're running salamanders then. You, you might, you might be right, but my philosophy and, and I get crap for this. Like I'm, I'm documenting this. Like I believe you should, you should build your list. For what you plan to face in the fourth, fifth, sixth round of the tournament. Yes. I think that you should always use your skill to get you through the early rounds of the tournament. And magic, to, 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 like magic gets buys and skill. And then you, the people that truly went out in some of these mega tournaments are the ones that, that have planned to beat what you will automatically face. Right. But in, in, you, the, you, in the bottom rounds. But if we're saying that there's a hands down winner in the air quotes marine meta, yeah. Like you, why why would you not run unless it's just a hobby decision or you really like your your flavor? Look, why I, wouldn't you just do exactly what we're talking about? I don't I don't disagree. I, I think that the, the salamanders will be like ultimately very strong because they get to compete against some of like I th- I think the salamanders will wreck demons. I think they'll wreck uh corn builds like chaos space brain even corn builds. Uh, I think that just they, the fact that they don't have to worry about being Overwatch or or they don't have to worry about um hand to hand like their Overwatch is as deadly as any other phase of the game like it's just silly yeah yeah when you can pick up that many models in there in in the opponent's turn yeah and and then also we can convert it to mortal wounds like for uh without too many cp investment you can convert a high amount of stuff into mortal wounds in the opponent's turn yeah and and almost not like it's it seems kind of silly amount to be honest but yeah yeah i'm with you so that, that again this is all contributing to why i think it is the what it will be the apex predator list and so then how do you beat it? You know, that's, that, that's the next phase. Like, like right now, again, I, I think that right now Iron Hands is, is the best, you know, for, for things that have allowed, uh, the cutoff to be past Iron Hands, then like what, what you, you should take to beat that kind of stuff. You know, it, it might come full circle back around to, uh, Imperial Fist. I mean, again, I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but I mean, that's just where your mind should be at. Like, oh, I, I, I thought you had something in mind. Oh, well, I mean, I do. I, I think a lot of, like, a thousand heavy bolters or whatever, you know, when you have a thousand damage, two cuts that you can put on somebody. Right, regardless of the phase. Yeah, you're in the right spot. Uh, but I, but I think that that's, that's where your mind should be is like, how do, how do, how do you play that lo- a, a little bit longer range game against what the top list will be? Right. Let me ask something that's not really related, but maybe kind of related. Where do you think the place of things like last cannons in the game is right now? Man, like high, da- high, high variable damage, high strength weaponry. Are you better off going straight heavy bolter, just okay spam or I- any time that you? I don't think you want to be relying on a D six to be mm-hmm. what your outcome is. Right? Can I take take us on a little bit of a tangent? Absolutely. Let's think of the impulsor. Yep. The Impulsor in cover has a two plus save. It is a a hundred and some point, a hundred and cheap, a hundred plus plus points, uh, for a transport, uh, that has th- three guns on it. Yep. You don't want to be firing last cannons at it. You also don't want to be investing in the, uh, shield dome it has. Let me, okay. If I can Got tell it. you why, because the last cannon has neg, was it neg three save? Uh, yeah, that was three. three or four. Yeah. Neg, neg three save. In cover, it's still oh, getting, three. it's getting a five plus save. The Impulsor yep. has a footprint slightly larger than a Rhino. So if you want it to be in cover, on most modern tables, you can actually get it in cover. 
it's, that's a great singular example, but in a world of like, you still have Chaos Knights creeping around, you know, got repulsors, you got execute, you know, yeah, Leviathans, I, things I, look, that you're I, trying to take chunk damage on, right? Yeah, I'm agreeing, I'm agreeing with you on that, but let's think of the points or whatever. I guess you're asking what if a last cannon is good. Um, a last uh, cannon is more, or, or multi melta or grab or, cause it's kind of like, multi melta. There's a conversation of, around other weapons just not even being considered, right? But, uh, that's, but let me, let me stay on the last cannons for a second and we can creep on the multi melters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. uh, with, say, an impulsor with something with, something with a three plus save in cover that then gets a two plus save that means two thirds of the time even with your last cannon it's blanking the result yep. and then if it doesn't blank the result then you have to roll the d6 damage and then you're getting a three or lower on half the result so and it, you're essentially two thirds of the time you're getting a three wound result one third of the time you're getting no result at all and you paid extra points for that opportunity. Yeah. Or, yeah. or in, in other words, uh, you're, you're really only going to be firing that last cannon, hopefully, best case scenario, consistently two turns before turn three, you're probably engaged, right? So so you're averaging two shots with a D6, so you're averaging seven damage versus a heavy bolter, which is getting... I, I, I guess the stra- it's the strength five debate, right? Like, that's where you want to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, be, being able to wound... And we didn't factor in the wounds, like... Uh, depending on the time, you could be getting a three to wound. So like one third of the time, you're not doing anything at all right there. Right. So it's probably, uh, it's not even two third, uh, one third of the time. It's like 60%. Right. That you're not doing anything. Which doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't. It doesn't feel good at all. So uh, just go heavy bolters and don't look back. Yeah. So w- where that changes is where you get into like the Imperial Fist. So the Imperial Fist firing is a vehicle or a building add one to the damage result. So anytime you have, you have average plus one, uh, you're doing a, a heck of a lot better. Yeah, not to mention ignoring cover. Yeah, so um, that's where I would focus. If if you're playing, if you if you would like, if you're a last cannon enthusiast, mm-hmm. how do you beat the odds? That's where you're saying you key in on that chapter as a last cannon guy. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I think if you if you happen to have a bunch of um, counts as m- marine chapters or whatever, and you want to lose, use last cannons. Now, th- th- look, let me take it one step back. <laughs> okay, because you knew. I think you might know what my next. Well, no, I'm going to say, look, I don't even know if you're going, if you have last cannon centurions, that's a different equation because they can compete on multiple phases of the game. My, my question was going to be similar, but not the same. Uh, no, so, so, so where I was going with that was, so if you're not on Imperial Fist and you're not on last cannons and you're trying to, you know, what is more optimal, right? Like, I think we just basically said that Imperial Fist do heavy weapons in general better. And that if you're going to skew with random damage, that you're safer with them. But, it, you know, how does everyone else cope with, or, or are we in a world where they're not running heavy weapons and people are running, like, Stern Guard squads yeah. with assault weapons? See, if, if you're taking heavy weapons in Imperial Fist and you plan to fight the vehicle meta, then that's where you're at. Otherwise, you just want to be back in the in the bolter, heavy bolter range. Well, I, I, we're going, going to where you kind of started off, I like the idea of Imperial Fist against Tau chewing through drones, throwing out volume of shots. Like last week, you were talking about just the Death Watch. You're almost mimicking making some of the, the capabilities of that death watch list but at the same time you know you you might have the the gas to go go long distance against knights if you need to here and there yeah i think throwing out plus one damage weapons against vehicles which knights are of course yeah. uh, and, and it's kind of the metrics like can i kill a knight on turn one like back back in the early days that used to be my metric of uh yeah. how many last cannons i would put in the list is like can I affect a monolith on turn one? Like, how many last cannons do, do I need? And the answer was five, by the way. But <laughs> but it was just a math equation, right? It yeah. wasn't like a gut. It wasn't like a feeling. Like, what do I feel yep. like? It was what? How many Absolutely. last cannons do I need to do something? Track um, and all. I get it. And, and and now I think we're in a situation to where you could you could do that with different with cheaper weapons depending on what chapter you're playing. I agree. That's so probably the. Uh, Final sentence of the paragraph, right? Well, that, that's no. the answer to the thesis. If you can influence the odds, that's how. You, that's really the base odds of a last cannon are freaking garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, okay. Uh, tell me how I'm wrong, Chris. Josh, no, am, am I wrong with the math of of the odds being garbage? No, because well, uh, if, according to the latest numbers, probably. <laughs> But if you could influence those odds, and it's even a plus one on the damage against certain things is a is a huge modifier. Look, I'm not gonna lie; it's hard to click the the last cannon points on like an army builder like program, right? Like you click it, you just like ugh, that doesn't feel good. 
<laughs> but, 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 but in the back of your mind, you've got that, man, I feel like I need, I just don't want to leave home without a couple last cannons, you know? Well, if, if you can do things like, for instance, I mean, I know you're an Ultramarines player. If you can Ultramarines, the fact that you don't get the neg one to hit when you move or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Is that one of the, is that a rule for them? No uh, one, plays, no one plays Ultramarines, so I'm not sure. I don't have it. I, so, so what was the question again? <laughs> do the Ultramarines get a benefit for firing weapons as if they were stationary? I think they have a, a, a stratagem for that, but it's, it's assault weapon stuff, right? Or it's rapid fire or something. So not, like that. not last cannons. I don't think they have one for the heavy stuff. All right. Basically, where I'm going though is if you get to um, cheat the last cannons into better effectiveness through a stratagem or through a, a tactic or, or whatever, then then that greatly influences whether or not you take them. But if you're yes. just taking them right out of the box, or if you're putting them on something that doesn't get a bonus, then you're, you're wasting time. But we also live in a world of chapter masters and lieutenants and rerolls and gillamans and shoot twice. And so you're able to like you know CP that last cannon. I know that sounds terrible, but yeah, don't do don't ever do that. I, you get where I'm going though, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I, I get it. I'm definitely gonna do that. That's, but, that's like don't touch that button. Yeah, I'm touching that button. But see, you get to do that on the chapters that get a bonus anyway. So you, you get to do everything you're talking about, like on things that get bonuses. So like you know, Iron Hands. No, I don't. <laughs> well, no, we you, we don't, Chris. Yet anyway, but it's it's one of those situations to where if if you can better the odds of the last cannon to make it playable, and I and I'm also saying that the plus one to wound on vehicles, or or the fact that you might not get a negative to hit with them if you move, is enough. Okay. But base out of the box, like regular old Space Marine last cannon, trash. Okay. Let's rewind it back away from the specific last cannon discussion and talk about how to how to be a winner in the in the world of Marines, I guess. <laughs> That's just throwing it out there to frame the discussion about like, okay, well, how are you picking your if you're picking your Marines to, to pick pick Marines to, to win? That didn't come out right. If you're picking your flavor of Marines to beat Marines, what is it about well, that chapter you're focusing on to try to like? Gain an advantage. If I can't, I don't necessarily want to just limit it to Marines to beat Marines. I want to, like, frame it that the Marines are the list to beat. Uh, and Not think, Tau. Uh, no, I don't think Tau. Okay, Tau are benefiting from a couple of, of uh, yes. situational things. The fact that the, you need a ton of volume of fire in the early turns of the game. Like, your first two or three turns of the game don't limit the offensive potential of the Tau. It don't inhibit it in any way, shape, or form. You're just not doing enough to impose your will on the first two turns against that, Tau. Exactly right. Like, they have nothing about their game plan that is influenced by your first two turns with the way the Tau are set up currently, or with, with the way lists are set up currently right now, the way the terrain is set up at some of these major tournaments. Uh, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't do enough to impact the Tau turn. So the Tau general doesn't have to think for three turns. Well, arguably, they never do because they're just in the blast you off the table mode constantly. They're not a ton of maneuvering. It's just, it's just hide as many drones as you can, only re- reveal the high toughness stuff that's going to, you know, guide the, or, or be the first gate for incoming layers of defense based off toughness. Um, and then, you know, just keep shooting. Yeah, I mean, maybe, sacri- maybe we sacrifice a commander here and there to take out a, a, pri- a priority target. I want in a long term, it's a, a, a boon, right? Yeah, I want to be a, yes, I want to be a little bit more generous to the Tau generals. Uh, okay, uh, but you're right, you're exactly right. But that that is still a huge benefit to winning when you don't have to really consider your game plan from your army build. I mean, like you basically get to just do what your army does. I mean, yeah, you're warping the meta in a way of your own. Yeah, I mean, and and that's that's completely cool. And I actually like as someone who I. I own four Riptides, like so. I'm. I get. I get it. They were that's actually one more. That's one more than you need. Yeah, right, but, okay. but it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, originally. I love that big suit play. Like if um, I didn't like the tower originally because the 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 like aesthetic of the army wasn't pushed as far as I wanted it to be, and they got there with the Riptides. They were a clunkier Gundam, but yeah, yeah Riptides did a lot to help that aesthetic. Yeah, Riptides, and then what's the um, what's the next one? What's the next suit? Ghost. Ghost Kill? No, the Ghost Kill did, and then what What was the... Um, the Townar? The, the big one? The, no, the way... Start more, listing off fish names, we'll get it eventually. The one that was... I can't believe I can't remember it, but it's, it's the one that's in between the Super Tuna and the, and the Riptide. The Ivara? Oh, the other Forge Roll. Not the that's Forge Roll, but no, the big plastic one that roots down. Oh, the new one at the open top. The, yes. um, Y'all are doing The great. Siamese Fighting Fish. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, what I'm 
I'm oh saying my God. those suits, and I can't. The storm storm surge? Like was it the storm, storm surge, surge or something like that? It is yeah. storm surge. It is storm, yeah. Yes, those look amazing, and those did it for me. I'm like, yo, I, I could play this. But so anyway, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm hating on the strategy. I think that that's when you're going into a tournament to win. That is what you want. You want to limit your your failure points. Sure. And if you don't have to think about, you know, anything other than the shooting phase for the first two turns of the, de- the game, then y- you you have an automatic advantage. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yes, I think the tower great, and I think they're benefiting from a little bit of, of where we're at right now. So, ha- yes, they're a good list, and I think they also beat the Salamanders list. So, maybe tower the ultimate list. I want you to leave that awkward silence in the show. I, I, I really want to just let that whole tower the best dot, dot, dot really. Sink into the listeners. Well, and I just well, it's no different than the in, the, in the old days. The best thing to kill Marines was you know Eldar star cannons. It's not like it's revolutionary that a Xenos army is the best way to beat Marines, right? Well, I, so, mean, I mean, it's not the first it's, time. That it's would almost, almost like we've days. gone back to to third edition, right? Heavy bolters are good, and. <laughs> You know, star cannons or whatever. Yeah, no. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going to go that far yet. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't done any deep dives, relooking things. Apparently, for, uh, according to stats, I guess Necrons are on the climb and the increase in in games one, according to some of the you know stuff you hear out there. And you know, maybe they got some great tools against the Marines. You know, uh, it's, it's two d six dependent. If you ask me, tell you what, let's, let's take a quick break. We will come back and we'll talk a little bit about that and also some uh, some army lists that we're working on. Cool. Let's do it. FTN is brought to you by Discount Games Inc. Please visit them at www.discountgamesinc.com. And don't forget to ask Jay about ways to save even more on your hobby projects. Hey everybody, we are back. I'm TPM. I still got Chris and Josh here. Good evening. Hey. All right, we were just talking about Tal's the ultimate list. And it might be. Look, I mean, really, if if we take some things as truth, and, you know, as one man's opinion, I do think the Salamanders are going to be the list to beat. And if that influences what people take, Tal have a lot of long-range shots. So the question, the question is not necessarily like what units do you have to build your list to be able to compete with against salamanders. It's just, can you be salamander? I, I mean, Marines or like, is there a particular gimmick? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, a, a lot of things that we see winning right now are things that like, can I get my centurions up into your grill? Can I, can I cheat their movement up to getting you into their grill and then assaulting and touching your stuff and like making it real difficult for you to interact? And salamanders are really great at stymieing that. Like, okay, cool. You're over here. Let me dump like 17,000 mortal wounds on you or automatic hits or autopack wounds or something like that. You know, and then you're, you're basically bone. And, and I know we're, that's, that's the bring on, on marine meta, but if, if you like, Factor it all out to we shall be playing salamanders. Then what do you bring to beat that? And I, and I think the tower are a good option. I mean, you, you back this into that. But I also want to talk about uh, like the impulsor and the the, the Scorpius Doomstrider meta. Okay. I'm um, because that stuff. I mean, like the impulsor, for instance, has three guns on it. It's a it's a sub 100 point transport with 11 wounds. I think I'm pretty sure it's 11. A lot of wounds with the armor save we were talking about before. Like you can't kill that thing from eight inches away. What's the toughness on it? I'm sorry. S- seven, six, seven, something like that. Yeah. Like if it's shooting you for four turns before you get in range of it with your dumb flamer. Well, we know that there's ways around that whole argument, but yeah, no, there is, of course. Uh, but you have to think what you invested to get that there versus their 115 point transport. Okay. So we'll, listen, we'll- we're talking about vehicles, and now you're starting to try and make a case for people bringing last cannons again, Paul. You need to make up your mind. I'm not saying last cannons are the answer to to this. I mean, multi-melters might be. <laughs> um, well, salamander multi-melters. Yeah, I mean, th- there's, there's that. And actually, we've actually been talking about more flamers, but they also have the melter, melter ability. But yeah, that's it. I'm going, like, you ha- you're going to, like, three three weeks from now, you will have to plan to beat the salamanders. Unless we all unless we all agree that we're all just taking less stuff to beat the salamanders. Which has happened in the past, by the way. To right. where we've determined what the meta was going to be, and then we all, like, collectively decided we were going to beat the meta, and then the meta never existed. Oh, I, I remember remember very clearly back in 7th edition I had a list that was undefeated against Eldar and I never played them in the GT and it was like constant that's, spoiler lists. That's the best way and to I, be uh, undefeated then, right? <laughs> against Eldar. Yeah, yeah. You never play Eldar. So like, I, I, undefeated playing against Eldar with this list and then uh, when it comes to scoring and winning in a tournament, I never get to play them. Why? Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, let's let's talk about the the impulser for just one more second if I could. Now, look, I have two of them in my list, and I feel like I'm like under impulser. Uh, the impulser with two storm bolters, the missile array, and the iron hell heavy stubber is 102 points. And that's a dedicated transport, right? It is a dedicated transport, so you could technically have. I don't know, 11 of them in your army. They'll, they're not subject to the rule of three. Toughness, seven, 11 wounds apiece. Nice odd number. He needs the iron stone to get, go back to the way it was, and then I'll run it all day long. Well, but that's all, that's one transport, man. Yeah, I do agree that the, with the, with the original, like, printing of the iron stone, yes. But, but honestly, though, do you think anybody that you ever play against is going to feel like the best decision they can make is to fire their freaking entire army at your transport that holds six dudes? Do you you think that's the decision tree they're going to make? Uh, not without extensive experience, you know. I, I think that people will be more coy. Good players will be more coy, and they'll still do stuff like trying to, uh, you know, base you to keep you from shooting or something like that, right? Like, legitimately. Like, even in the ITC format, to where kill one is a valid strategy, just sometimes getting that kill one point. This has a toughness seven with 11 wounds with a three-plus armor save. You could potentially put a four-plus invulnerable save on this thing, which is not worth it. Don't do it because putting in cover with a 2 plus save is arguably just as good as if you invested points in a 4 plus save. Yeah. Like, do you do you think that most of the time someone is going to try to do that and be successful? Oh, and be successful? I think yeah. the successful part's where you lose people. Yeah. I think people will try it, but when you add the key keyword success... That's where your mileage may vary, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is where we come into like plus one last cannons or two damage heavy bolters is like like where your miles above, right? But mm-hmm. firing like standard stuff against one of these things, like you could effectively blank some someone's shooting phase entire turn one because you've got these in some trees. It's no different than you know people blanking shooting phases from people by putting you know key character keywords on stuff and then just keeping scouts out of line of sight closer. To Type deal. Agreed. That's where I'm thinking where the, the, the winning strategies are going to come into is like like we're talking about with the Tau. It's like how can you nullify someone's one or two turns and like Wave Serpents, the Impulsors, the Scorpius, they all do that. Is the idea you're nullifying it and then getting up there and shooting or assaulting? Or I just, just mentioned three transports that have more than one gun apiece. Okay. For so, for 100 points. Chaos Rhinos with twin bolters. I like where your head's at, but no. <laughs> so the direction you're going is, is just effective, non-rule of three, high toughness, with some kind of shooting output. I don't say spammable, but repeatable. Uh, vehicles. Spam is not a dirty word when we're talking about competitive. Yeah, but it just sounds uncreative. <laughs> yes, that's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's also things that that do it give you a I think a significant advantage in these in the two plus turns of the game. Okay, and that that once you bring once it, ugh, that brings you full circle back to the Mechanicum and the Impulsor because you and, and the Wave Serpent. Those are the those are the key. That's what you're liking. Put it that I, way. I, I do. I, I think that they are advantageous in what, what the world is, is right now. Like, look, a wave surf, wave surf has always been good, but they haven't been game winning. I, I think that we're going to find a situation to where, like, wave serpents, they neg one the damage. So great. Hey, man, I understand that you built your entire army around the chapter tactic, but guess what? I just undid it. I just undid it. Yeah. Because I exist for free. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, this is what I'm thinking about is, is I'm, is I'm leaning in towards beginning of next year with my army list. Like, what 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 should I be playing? And a bunch of impulsors and Scorpius Dune Striders or Dune it's Dune Riders. Sorry, I think it's Dune Riders are, are jumping up at me as being like, let's build some lists. Well, give it another couple of weeks and wait for the Sisters book because you might be on rhinos with Sisters in it or something. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I mean, that's like, I'm just saying, like here we are, like the quandary that we're emulators in, emulators or something. I, insert right, like the the new hotness. I'm just thinking about what you look out for. Like again, this is this is how. The, that's how the mind works, right? It's like, okay, let's let's if we if if we can agree that Salamander is going to be super strong, yes. Like how and, and and that people that play Marines will gravitate towards the super strong Marine list, and Marines make up the bulk of the players in 40k, like okay. per, per capita of player. Yeah, we're not we're not breaking new ground here, but okay, I hear what you. I know where you're going. And then they 
ca- they gravitate towards salamanders because they have advantageous rules. Then how do you win versus that? Like how how do you get past round two and three of the tournament? And then what do you expect to see in round five and six? I don't know. Is the Avatar still immune to flame weapons? That's a good question. I think you're putting a lot of faith in one model though. Ah, uh, you go double Avatar, dog. But and that is fearless Eldar, fearless fearless Eldar <laughs> with wave serpents and avatars breaking yeah. backs. That's an interesting question. I don't know the answer. <laughs> Sorry, that was me just in a in an idiot savant moment remembering that he's immune <laughs> to flame or melted. No, he did used to be. Like, part. it was actually pretty kind of cool when he were up. Uh, be like, sorry, I'm immune to that. Yeah. But I digress. Outside of the Avatar Kane solving the 40k meta, um, <laughs> I don't know. She's just the dual Avatar Kane slash uh, Supreme what? Command with the Incarn. Yeah. That is such I'm a claim in that scout. That's I, I, got, I have a beautifully painted Forge World Avatar with the spear. I can't I can't stand the sword, but the spear is the hotness. Like, I'm no pun fight, intended. Fight I know, I know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sword guy. I just, you like the sword? I do. What is wrong with you? I don't know. It was the original one. Guys, both. Both is good. Both is good here. Mm. But anyway, I, I digress. I can't get behind that. Oh, Chris, you've been working on a list recently. Yeah. I have. Yeah. The Runner GD is coming up in just about well, it's a month from tomorrow. We're recording this on Wednesday. And uh, I've been trying to come up with a few lists and uh, hoping to get something decided this week so I can figure out exactly what I need to build to be ready for it. What do you have so far? Well, I've got a couple of different list gimmicks that I'm floating between. Oh, one revolves around a, a two-battalion vanguard list. The other one revolves around a brigade list. And uh, let me kind of give you my, my thinking on the brigade real fast, because the, the brigade, it makes you take, you know, fast attack, heavy support, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And a lot of people don't like that you're locked into taking some options from these. But when I'm when I'm seeing a, you know, starting the game with 15 command points, minus one, when you inevitably death company your, your smash captain... Uh, I like the idea of being forced to take units like scout bike squads, where I feel like, particularly in an ITC environment, which this is, having units that can make the make the distance, you know, cross cross ground, put out a decent amount of small arms fire, that that's going to be good and useful. Uh, when I'm trying to score objectives or maybe do a little bit of screen clearing. Aside from that, there's some really good cheap heavy support options that offer, like quad mortars, for example, offer a lot of really strong, no line of sight needed fire. Eliminators are another unit that, you know, throwing some of those in there means that you can put some pressure on some characters. You can, in, and it's not something that with one squad is going to be incredibly game changing. But I have, using Eliminators in the past, been able to pick off a few characters here and there that ended up making a big difference. Supporting those units with, like, I have some librarians in there. Of course, I always put Mephiston on my list because, well, Mephiston. But I, I'm also floating between a couple different options for HQs, including the Phobos Librarian, and also some different troops like Infiltrators and Intercessors, uh, or Infiltrators and Incursors, I should say. Just trying to, right now, I'm trying to figure out what the sweet spot is between those two lists. So I've got this Brigade, and then I've got another list that involves either a very big sort of mass inf- uh, infantry blob of Death Company and Sanguinary Guard, or cutting down on those numbers and throwing in a Leviathan in a in a Relic Drop Pod, just to have that kind of hammer that comes down and demands the enemy's attention. I had some good success using the Leviathan in my games at the War Games for Warriors this summer, and I haven't done anything with the Leviathan since then. So um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I, I'm debating on whether I want to just focus all on Marine bodies or if I want to have kind of an anchor or some kind of hammer to have the rest of my army rotate around and, and, and use. I think that's interesting. So you mentioned the quad mortars, and I think it's important to point out that Blood Angels do not get Thunderfire cannons. Yeah, yeah, I know we've, we, we've talked about that before on the show, but uh, you know, one of the things that you and I were talking about, Paul, I think it was either last week or two weeks ago, was the two fire modes on the quad mortars. How you've got that 60-inch range, I believe it's 4D3 shots per quad mortar platform that doesn't require line of sight. But if you do have line of sight, I think it's, I believe, a 24-inch range. Yeah. Strength 8, the, 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 the shatter two. shell needs line of sight and a certain amount of range. It's important to point out that uh, the reason that you don't have thunder fires is because Blood Angels can't take them. That, that's it. Right. So so then you have to deal with, like, what, what can I deal with things inside of Magic Boxes? Uh, the mm-hmm. Magic Boxes are a reactionary rule for that certain tournaments are adopting that set up ter- sections of the board that you cannot shoot into. Right. Without, and with things that require 
for our line of sight. Yeah. Some some of it also is just good for screen clearing and for the ability to put put some pressure on things that are a little bit outside of your your yeah, marine's range enough. to punch. Blood, blood angels get to clear screens because of the sheer nature of the blood angels. They get to run up there and, yeah. and assault things and clear things out. But they also like you have to be able to get inside of these buildings because you can't assault the vehicle. There's all kind of like r- rules that that factor off of that. All by intent, right? Like the magic box rule is an mm-hmm. intent. Like yes, it is by the nature all designed to do exactly what it does, but that influence is your list design and your build. So for me to give you some critique on what is good, I have to take that into account of the fact that you can't take the Thunderfire Cannon, which is superior to the Quad Mortar, for doing that type of thing. So for sure, you do, you've got to take the Quad Mortar. Yeah. And if I if I had uh, the ability, if they were still for sale, I, I was considering doing a triple eliminators for the heavy support, just because it's very cheap. You don't have to babysit them so much. It's like and they can seventy five, seventy three point for a heavy support shot with three sniper rifles that are pretty pretty potent. Yeah, and don't require line of sight. And they've got a, a few different fire modes, so I, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, I just I'm not going to be able to get the eliminators in time for the event itself. I don't want to make sure I have the actual models. So I've got one squad of eliminators in the in the brigade. Now in the other list, I don't have any heavy support, so it's the two battalion and van and vanguard. And each of these lists features a death company and sanguinary guard or vanguard veterans and sanguinary guard. Now the vanguard veterans all have storm shields because it's two points per model to put a storm shield on these guys. And I also put a few thunder hammers and a relic blade in there. I had, I've had some success with, with that unit, just being able to threaten a wide variety of targets and being durable enough to make it through some of the, you know, the, the kind of spoiler stuff you expect to kill your death company. If you can always depend on that three plus save, then it's a lot easier to throw a unit like the Vanguard veterans out to soak up some of that, that fire. I had a really good opportunity to test them out against custodies back when the, oh gosh, what is that tank called? I'm, I'm spacing on that tank. Yeah. 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 When, when that tank was really big, there were, it was a list that featured three of them. And I brought my Vanguard veterans down to, to hop in and do some damage to it. They soaked up all three of those tanks fire over the course of like a turn and a half. For two points, it's hard to argue. It's hard to argue with it. I feel well, like. I mean, yeah, look at what uh, your available yeah. resources are. I'm saying that I, I try not to invest points into what is a premiumly priced point wise one wound model. Like I well, would, I would be very calculated with how I did that. And it sounds like you were, but I'm saying that's my thought process. They, they performed well for me in all, all three of the games I tested them out with. I was, I was very pleased, but it, it comes at the sacrifice of some of the flexibility that the death company give you because being able to run it, rush up the board with the death company and the pregame strategy, even if you're not going first, you know, you may be able to get, get the death company in the magic box, for example. And then being in a good position to assault on your turn is really strong. And sometimes you sacrifice your flexibility in order to get that durability, depending on what you feel like is coming in. So I'm, I'm debating right now between a big unit of death company with like five thunder hammers. Let me help you make your decision. So in 10 words or less, describe what your army is going to do. Be everywhere, score objectives, kill stuff. Which of those two lists does those things? I feel like the, the, best. the, the brigade does it the best. Well, then there you go. Right. I'm not trying to overly simplify the process, but it's like you, there's some hemming and hawing about what might be optimal. But realistically, if you, you're going into the game, regardless of what your opponent's trying to do, you've got your own goals on the table. And if you're secretly sabotaging yourself, you know, picking things that's not uh, what you want to be doing, then you're probably not building the list correctly. Right. So, like, if you don't need the the quad mortars because you need to be scoring objectives and they're not able to get there. Why are you taking them? Like those kinds of decisions become, you know, a more automatic for yourself. I get you want to be able to interact and have some large firing, but if, you know, but it, the, the answer may be, so what if you do? Is it really going to be game changing? Whereas another five primaris with, you know, is actually do, be, doing better for what your end state is trying to be, right? Just no, throwing, I see throwing it what you're saying. No, I, I, I appreciate that. The, I find that with the with the quad mortars with the eliminators, there's generally in ITC missions there's going to be an objective or two in your deployment zone. So there's always going to be at least a unit that you want back there scoring. And I'm pretty good at spreading my army around and making sure that I don't have a lot of uh, threats 
from enemy deep strikers. My screens are, are pretty solid and they're fairly layered. And this will be much to Paul's joy, I'm, I'm sure. I don't have any tactical marines in this list, in either of these lists. So it's all scouts and some primaris marines, which is, you know, it's a milestone for me in 8th edition 40k, guys. You should be proud. <laughs> You've evolved like a like a Pokemon. Yes, moving up to the to the next level. I've de-evolved to scouts and evolved to some uh, to some Primaris Marines as I as I've been able to work on them. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have a unit that you know is always going to be back there to score on that thing, and it is something that makes people think about where they want to place their units. So I I like that they're there. the The problem with heavy support in any situation, and one of the things that made the the Leviathan kind of a tempting choice to float in and out of some of these lists was that it is one of those units that you can you can push it up the table and it can either you know your enemy can either break themselves upon that model and take it down but leave your other key assault elements to be able to do what they need to do or you know it can end up completely spoiling your strategy so that was another thing that's, that's the kind of the idea of this of this hammer or this anchor unit to to bring down and when you put a leviathan on the table people want to kill it you're describing it and not not to be like in an insulting way it's it's a crutch right it's doing everything you you want your list to be able to be doing because it's an optimal choice it's not that it's um it's just the best choice overall it sounds like right like you you've answered well, the question in a roundabout way which is don't take blood angels regardless Regardless, just take a Leviathan because pretty much of any color, they do work, right? They they do work, and a lot of the work I find that they do isn't necessarily in things that they kill. It's in the shooting that they continually soak up. Having a toughness save model with a four plus and vulnerable save is really strong. And when you're dropping, say that, that one command point stratagem, I think it's what Fury of the Ancients or something like that, where it, it gives it that uh, reroll bubble. To support the units that are around it, uh, we saw we saw success with that with the Daredeo Dreadnought before, which is something that's still tempting for for players. But it's another one of those things where I feel like I can bring a Leviathan, I can bring a mech heavy list, I can bring a bunch of shooting. I, I mean, I've had lists where a third of the army was devoted to a very strong backfield shooting element. But all of the other Marines right now do that so much better than I do. I need to go all in on the fact that I've just got the 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 rules for the extra attacks and assault, maximize those attacks with some of these characters, and, you know, improve the strength or whatever whatever needs to happen so that I can do what I do the best without feeling like I need to invest a, bun- a bunch of points into a backfield shooting army. And that's where I feel like the cheaper options, like quad mortars and the eliminators. Well, so you said you don't have a backfield shooting army, but at the same time, when I asked you the question up front, you said you wanted to be everywhere, score objectives, and uh, what was the other one? Kill stuff. Kill stuff. And kill stuff. Kill so, stuff. So are you now saying that you're weighting kill stuff above the other two, right? Because if that's the case, then that shifts your answers once again. I, I'm not trying to like undermine your, your thought process, but it seems like you're no, very... No, it's how um, you approach it, right? Like, you just think about how can I do what my fun level is, like, even better. Better. Right. So, I mean, well, it's not even a, a fun level thing, too. It's like, what what am I good at? You know, in every game, units like Sanguinary Guard and Death Company and Smash Captains are always going to be trying to engage with stuff in almost every situation because they can threaten pretty much anything on the table. Those are your Vanguard units. Those are the units that are going up to deal the killing blows to the enemy hard hitting stuff like knights or you know, for uh, repulsor executioners or in, insert whatever thing here, Eldar flyers, wh- whatever you need to, 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 you know, whatever you need to kill, because you can't play a 40, a game of 40k, I guess, unless you're Tau with drones and not expect to kill much. Like, you have to be able to, to, to at least throw some damage out there. And I'm not going to be throwing damage out there with stuff like last cannons. Yeah, but your question, it, the answer or the, to go back to where you're going, it's, it's what phase are you trying to do that damage in? You're not doing it in the psychic phase. You probably really honestly, is blending is not looking to do it in the shooting phase a lot of times. You need some nice setup, right? Maybe do enough to deflect your enemy from, from taking out your assault pieces, but you're probably just trying to get there to get that extra strength uh, in, on the assault, right? Right. Well, I mean, and the whole reason for having units like the quad mortars in there is that it gives me an opportunity to clear some of the units out 
that would be shielding my deep uh, the wouldn't, enemy's wouldn't, wouldn't juicy targets like, from deep strikers. Wouldn't something like the war suits that can enter that can cause you know I'm talking about so the disruption? The, the, like you had, yes, yeah. the disruption. That's where I was going. Thank you, Paul. Now the the Invictor war, war suits. Now that that is an option. That is an idea. Uh, it's not something that I put into the list. They they are a little bit more expensive. Uh, but and they're they doing what you want to be doing better than quad mortars, right? And arguably they can sustain Possibly. some of your other models. You know, not sustain, yeah. but they, they can they can help. So you're talking about support. So you're talking yes. about pu- pushing, like, like I'm a big believer in, like, pushing as many points as you. If you want to have an assault strategy, you, you can't do it with one unit. You can't right. do it with, you can't do it with 10% of your points. You need to do it with 50 to 100% of your yeah. points. Yeah, you don't have uh, a strategy that makes, makes the enemy not have, not able to target your assault elements. So the only way to get them to not target your assault elements is to have them otherwise engage with other models. But, but and see, I'm saying I mean, the Invicta on, Warsuit on is... the other side of it, for, like, a, a strictly ITC-type mission uh, parameter, which you're playing an ITC mission, is that, is that, I mean, your missions. Yeah, yeah, we'll be using ITC. We'll be using the terrain rules. You have to account and, for the, the magic box shenanigans, and like the Invictor War Supes don't solve that equation. Yeah, they can't because they because the flamers don't. Yeah, line of sight and all that. So yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, a, I'm just pointing out that they don't like. I've got them in my list, by the way, but I know that that's not what their their goal is to not do that. Like it, again, if I if if he can take thunderfire cannons, that's like step one. Replace all that stuff with thunderfire cannons. Okay, so why not ally in somebody with thunderfire cannons and another? Because uh, that's, that's not the same. Paul, Paul, he said the he said the a word. <laughs> <laughs> you know? now, but but see, I mean, I, where you're going with it is like, what, how how do you? Is there a better indirect fire solution for the Blood Angels? And I and I don't know. I don't think the answer is 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 yes. Uh, I will say that currently things like a Smash Captain, Mephiston, or whatever they are, they do solve for that. Right. So you, well, I mean, you he's got Lamartes, than... he's got other, he's got Chaplain stuff, you know, accessible to Blood Angels. I mean, maybe that's yeah, and that, that's one of the things actually I'd like to bring up real fast since we're on the subject of HQs. Uh, there's a few things I've been floating between just trying to maximize a little bit on the effectiveness here. The Phobos Librarian, I feel like synergizes pretty well with Eliminators and some of the, like, things like the Incursors or the Infiltrators because you can cast some of those, uh, obturation psychic powers to make them harder to target, which can help your screen defense last a little bit longer, particularly in the case of the Infiltrators where they have that 12 inch bubble. That can be, I feel like, very useful and synergized pretty well. On the other hand, um, I've uh, I've decided to take a leaf out of my buddy Thomas's book and try going for instead of using Lamartes, using just a regular chaplain because he has that constant re-roll everything in combat for everybody and not just Death Company aura. What are yeah. you guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, that's strong. I, I like that. I think you just throw away all the range and you double down on all your assault. You're already running Mephiston and all this other stuff. Just go embrace your coronate tendencies and just go for it. There's no coronate tendencies. I don't tendencies. know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this guy? What is he doing on our show? He doesn't even know. Like, anyway. Embrace your um, inner flesh terror then and just go in there and dig him out. Fair enough. Go, fair go, enough. What would okay, Seth so, do, right? Okay, let, let me go down this list with you then. Based on what okay. we talked about, this is the one that I feel like we're, we're leaning more towards. This isn't the brigade list. Uh, right now it's sitting at seventeen hundred eight points, but this is what I've got in it. And I left I, I, I left a little bit of wiggle 2, room. Right. I left a little wiggle room in there so we could talk about things that we could put in to maybe bring this up to the next level. Okay. Two and Victor Warfare's so, got it. Uh, I have the standard Smash Captain loadout. I have the chaplain with the jump pack. I have Scout squads. I have an intercessor squad and an infiltrator squad uh, between the two battalions. I have Mephiston and a Phobos librarian. And then for my vanguard detachment, I have the Sanguinor. I have a Sanguinary Ancient who's going to do Sanguinary Ancient things with the banner, with the fill no pay and all that good stuff. And then Sanguinary Guard with it, a full 10 man squad with uh, Power Fist, two Power Fists and two Infernal Pistols, which I may shave the Infernal Pistols off if I need, you know, an extra 14 points somewhere. I rarely get to shoot them. When I do, it feels awesome, but I rarely get to shoot them. And then this list has the Vanguard veterans in there with a relic, a relic blade, two thunder hammers, and ten storm shields. It has three hundred points left over. Can you? So what do you guys feel like? Can you do me a favor and go back over the list, but tell me the battlefield role you envision for each of those units? <laughs> back to your back, back to your score more, hold more, shoot more. But like, but how, see, what, are, did, what are the keys to spare us that? Like, I think that you are. <laughs> Like well served with putting some of these very cheap, like the impulsor in there. 
Like you get to take impulsors, don't you? I think that they're uh, allowed. Yeah, now that they're now that the model's actually for sale. Yeah, I think that uh, they are part of the army. I mean, it is a one hundred and two point three gun caddy that does everything that you're describing and can move. It's one hundred two points stuff up the field. I mean, Primaris only, right? But it, it also happens to hold down objectives and things. That's what you need. You need things like even rhinos would be would be all right. Well, I can tell you, I do already have rhinos, so that part's that that part's helpful. I mean, <laughs> I mean that would be. I mean, that's all. Right. I mean, that's that, that's not a bad. See, if if you're trying to make a purchase decision, that's different to what's an effective decision, you know. And that's we actually get we get questions all the time, like, "Yo, how do I make my collection effective?" You know, and that and that's that's a fair that's a very fine question. I, I actually got some grief on the last time that I mentioned, like the, the time I threw out there is like, I build my army list and then, and then I, the HQs kind of decide themselves. Not everyone believes in that. There's again, there's different ways you can, you can attack the army build situation. But I think yeah. what, what you're needing is things that, that support that. Heck, I mean, even Furioso Dreadnoughts are not terrible because you're looking for distractions. You're looking for things that help enable you to complete your objective on the table. Yes. And, and that's now, would yeah. you how, how would you feel about then taking you know the Furiosa Dreadnought idea, pushing it towards something like a Furiosa Librarian, so you can benefit from some of the character the, shenanigans? The Librarian, or are you actually amazing. just the Librarian Dreadnought is really strong in in, in today's world? So okay, the only thing I, I I think I think the Invictor War suits need to be uh, a thing. I think I've beat that to death, but that I think that you need a little bit more keyword Phobos in there to keep people from deep striking into your business on your on your way doing what you're doing. Yes, yeah, so they don't disrupt your. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. So find so find some say, more Phobos HQs before we start talking about your offensive punishing power. Uh, you know, uh, Smash Captains. I mean, yeah, Smash Captains probably mandatory. But my point being that use more use use a use a Phobos librarian. You know, start spotting in some of these things to get the 12 inch anti deep strike bubble in from the Phobos armor. Yeah. Well, I've I've got a Phobos librarian in the list. I've got infiltrators in the list. So I mean, there's there's a couple keyword Phobos things that are in there already. Uh, pushing pushing that envelope a little bit more. I mean, are you are you thinking just replacing the intercessors with more infiltrators or well, the, the yeah. captain to back things up? I mean, you're going to be really susceptible to things like genius of cults. So yeah. you, you want to be able to stymie their tricks. I, okay. I'm good with the captain. And, and uh, right now, yeah. the list itself with a, to, with a Phobos captain. Yeah, Phobos captain. So the, the, right now, your your base list doesn't inhibit people playing out their own tricks against. You. So you need to throw in a couple of uh, okay. spoilers. And right. they're still so, good. They got other I mean, bo- other stuff going their way too. They're not just the one trick pony to, to prevent deep strike, right? They so I mean, but, I mean they've they've got those good bolt guns that ignore some of the to hit penalties and cover. I believe. Yeah. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just one saying, the like, two. there's yeah. Double double down looking at that, and maybe you don't run some of the other stuff you thought you might. You know, maybe you make a hard decision to cut. Cut, you know, maybe a chaplain or something. I, I don't know. It may not be it. You may, you may not need the rerolls or the extra wound or the extra attacks or the extra something somewhere else. You know, if you're getting there with more of your list intact, right? Well, I, I think building the core, like that's what I was saying a second ago, is like building the, the the core of the list to complete your objectives about what you want to do, and then the HQs kind of take care of themselves. That's uh, let 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 us into the yes. into the situation of like, okay, we need something to back off infiltrators. Like okay. come at it, come at it that way. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, the I mean, the the big haymaker of this list is the same haymaker that's been constant in Blood Angels list since the Codex came out, which is the the Sanguinary Guard and and whatever supporting them, whether it's the Vanguard or if it's Death Company. In this list, I almost kind of feel like the Vanguard veterans should be subbed out for the Death Company because the Death Company turn into that kind of mulcher unit. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where with the Vanguard veterans, yeah, they'll, they'll come down. Maybe I'll get a good a, a good charge off with them. I like to use the uh, Skies of Fury. I believe it's what it's called. It's the one that lets you redeploy. So I'll set these guys up on the table and then I'll redeploy them where the opponents left something open and let them kind of act as a, a sponge for some of the heavy incoming fire that would perhaps be directed at the Sanguinary Guard when they but come But imagine in. a world where you didn't have to use all this extra strategery to get to that point and you could just throw the Invictor War suit at it, right? Yes. Uh, Invictor War suit. I think we've got Invictor Bingo no, for, I'm just, for tonight. I, I mean, it, I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that it's a it's a bad choice. I mean, I'm. I'll be honest. I don't, I don't know if I can go straight up go and buy a bunch of Invictor War suits to throw in here and get them ready in time. No, no but, that's not what I'm saying. Then then go back to what Paul's saying and you know choose your choose your weapon and go back to you know Furiosos or something, right? Right. 
But I mean, that's something that I can do. Um, something I have ready at hand. Everybody's got a few Furiosa dreadnoughts if you've been collecting Blood Angels for any amount of time. Well, the Furiosa is something that I hadn't really thought about for a little while, so maybe I'll consider that. Hopefully I can get some play tests in and see if I can play with that just a little bit. Well, to be honest, but, it's probably a unit your opponent's not really going to be like worried about, so it's going to get there. Like, he's not going to focus it down in the first couple of turns. Yeah, the stigma of, of being what it is, carrying, carrying forward to its advantage in this case. Mm-hmm. I'll play with the idea of the Furiosa dreadnought not uh i'm i'm thinking more likely I'll, I'll swing towards the librarian side of that of that spectrum because of the you know, the better to hit I'm, some of the extra damage the targetability stuff you bring up because a good point. Un- so, so what we're saying is like it's like we're 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 giving what we believe is like the obvious like this like swing it to this direction but if it's not in the capability to do it either because you're up a t- i guess a time constraint or a purchase constraint that limits what you can do so you've got to figure out what the best thing is sure well all right well i'm going to keep playing with this hopefully I'll have a, a, a finalized list that maybe we can talk about next week. Uh, filled out all 2,000 points, and then uh, we'll, we'll see how it does. This is probably going to be the with uh, with Mephiston coming out at the end of the month, and the Psychic Awakening being you know, the logical extension of that being that there's something coming for Blood Angels in the next couple of months. This might be the kind of the, the last hurrah of what what this army is before those updates come out. So it'll be interesting to see the before and after and how they perform. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks for joining me tonight, and we'll see you all next week. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah.